Believe it or believe it, because the 42 inch LG C5 OLED TV or monitor might just be the best OLED monitor you can buy today. Now there's a lot of great options on the market today, but why is the 42 inch LG C5 so good? Well, there's a ton of different reasons, but I think there's two standouts I wanna get out of the way right now. It is much brighter than 32 inch OLED options on the market, including WOLED and QD OLED, and it's also gonna have much better ambient light handling. The finish on the 42 inch LG C5 is not only glossy, leading to incredibly clear looking images, but unlike every single monitor on the market today, it actually does handle incoming light really well and leads to almost perfect black levels in all lighting conditions. Now it will have reflections, but it hangs on to the contrast in a way that nothing else can. But despite those massive advantages that the 42 inch LG C5 has, is it the right display for you and your PC setup? Let's go ahead and take a look and find out just that. Real quick, let's get the specs out of the way. This is a 42 inch 4K, 144 Hertz plus VRR W OLED Evo panel with HDR10, HGIG and Dolby Vision support. It comes in at around $1,300 and you get a one year parts and labor warranty. In terms of the overall design, it's similar to every other year. It has a very thin bezel, it looks great, and I do think it could fit very well in just about any environment. It also comes with 300 by 300 millimeter vase mount support, so you may need to adapt it if you wanna use it on a typical monitor arm. For PC use and in terms of the ports, pause if you need to, but the most important thing is that it has four HDMI 2.1 ports, making it excellent as a gaming hub so that you can have your sound bar, your consoles, your PC, everything plugged into it with no issues whatsoever. And in terms of the specs overall, I gotta say, that it's looking pretty good. And although $1,300 is quite a bit to spend on a monitor, it's pretty similar to the 32 inch OLED options out there and you're getting a whole lot more screen real estate. And I do also expect it'll be dropping in price pretty quickly as well. And I'll have affiliate links to this thing in the description below from every store that you'd wanna buy it from. I personally purchased it from Value Electronics. I'll have them down there as well. But you might wanna check them out just to see if it is on sale or not. But with that out of the way, let's get into the performance of this thing and Real quick, if you've never used an OLED display, here's what you can expect. Due to the infinite contrast ratio and per pixel local dimming, as well as super fast response times, expect excellent gaming performance, super high contrast in all lighting environments, as well as a really great and colorful image all around that should pretty much blow every single 32 inch OLED monitor out of the water in terms of its HDR capabilities. But specifically, let's talk about the color first as we do a deeper dive into the display. And for all you display enthusiasts out there, I'm about to go over all the Calman accuracy results, but for everybody else, go ahead and skip ahead to the next chapter where I wrap it up. Now, in terms of the SDR color accuracy, well, it does follow the EOTF curve pretty well, which means you shouldn't see anything massively blown out. And it does clamp the colors correctly when set to the auto settings. Although I was able to slightly improve it and I'll have the best settings linked in my page Patreon in the description below, which also gets you access to the Discord and is the best way to support my channel. Now, in terms of the overall color accuracy in a color checker, it is a little bit below my expectations, although you should be able to hook this up to Calman and get it to be pretty dang accurate, as that's how it's been in previous years. Now, in terms of the HDR tracking out of the box, it was actually very good and basically didn't need hardly any adjustments at all, and the overall color match accuracy was pretty decent, but a little bit worse than I'd like to see. And in terms of the BT2020 color gamut coverage, I did see around 74% UV. Pretty good for an LG W OLED, considering it does have the white subpixel, which can wash out the brightest of bright highlights in certain scenes. And if you're just here for the TLDR, here's what I'll tell you. In SDR, this thing is definitely gonna look good. All the colors will definitely jump off the screen, especially considering that it has a glossy screen, which helps with that quite a bit. It's gonna look very vibrant. Now in HDR, it still will look vibrant. Colors are gonna look very good for the most part, but it is gonna be a step behind QD OLED as it can't reach the same BT2020 HDR color coverage and therefore really bright colors are gonna desaturate slightly in certain scenes. But for the most part, I don't think it's gonna be an issue and you are gonna love the color performance of the 42 inch LG C5. But now let's talk about the LG C5's biggest strength and that's definitely the brightness. In window pattern tests, you can see here that it does get very similar to the LG C4, which is a massive step ahead of all the 32 inch options on the market today, but it actually gets far more impressive in real HDR content. Take 
a look here at the LG C5. Not only is it significantly brighter than the LG C4, coming in with around 100 nits higher brightness on highlights and surprisingly a decent improvement on the terrain in the Baldur's Gate 3 test I do at the D65 white point, but it's now reached a point where it's nearly twice as bright as 32 inch QD OLED options on the market today. And it is definitely very noticeable, especially if you're in a brighter environment. Say you have the window open, something like that. The 42 inch LG C5 is going to be a much better option for you than a 32 inch QD OLED option. It's gonna be brighter and it's gonna hang on to its contrast in a far better manner. But now let's move on to the gaming performance. You know, is this thing gonna be good enough for gaming? Because remember, it's just 144 hertz, whereas the 32 inch QD OLED and W OLED options on the market today are 240 hertz. It's a big difference. And you might be asking, is it noticeable? The answer is yes. The drop from 240 hertz to 144 hertz is noticeable. They do look smoother and they feel a bit more responsive on the 32 inch option. So if you're looking for the fastest, smoothest display possible at the 4K resolution, you will wanna opt for a 32 inch option. However, the 42 inch LG C5 is definitely no slouch. It's still OLED, it still has those near instant response times, which means even at 144 Hertz, which I do think is a very acceptable refresh rate, and you're probably gonna struggle to do much beyond that in a lot of games anyway, it's very, very good. I mean, take a look here at the latency results. At 28 milliseconds of total system latency is definitely very respectable and is pretty close to even a lot of 240 hertz options on the market today. And in terms of the refresh rate, while it won't match up quite to the fastest displays on the market, it's actually doing very good. You can't quite read that it says better than 60 hertz on the moving UFO, but it's certainly very discernible in motion and shouldn't be a disadvantage whatsoever. In fact, this will be much clearer in motion than the vast majority of LCDs out there. Even competitive esports targeted LCDs probably won't look quite as good as this for the most part. Now let's move on to the text clarity and subpixel layout. Look, this does use the older blue, green, red, white, or whatever way you want to say it. So it is going to have some issues with text where it looks like there's a bit of shadowing behind text as the white subpixel does mess up things a bit and it's a little out of order. However, because it does have a glossy screen, despite that at the 4K resolution, it is incredibly clear at the correct distance. If you're super close to the screen, well, you probably Probably gonna want to move back it won't look quite as good and if you do so it's gonna look absolutely incredible it's still 4k that means at the right distance it'll look just as crisp as any 32 inch option on the market today at the same 4k resolution and speaking of the coating yeah, we gotta talk a little bit more about that. I know I touched on it at the beginning of this review, but my God, the coating on this display is the best that money can buy, period, as of right now. Not only is it crystal clear, but it also leads to excellent performance in a bright environment. Unlike QD OLED, which unfortunately washes out and gets a magenta tint that massively harms the contrast when any light enters the room, the 42 inch LG C5 has no such issues. In fact, black looks almost perfectly black under all lighting conditions, and it's just, it hangs on a contrast like you wouldn't believe. It's excellent, and if that's your main concern, this is an absolute recommendation for me. Buy it right now. This is the best you're gonna get unless you wanna move up to a 55 inch display like the LG G5, which hey, is gonna be better. That's gonna be my main monitor and it's gonna be incredible, but if you don't wanna go 55 inches, this is probably gonna be your best option for especially a brighter room. But now let's talk about next, the viewing angles and uniformity. Now look, this has been an issue on LG W OLEDs for some time. They've had a lot of vertical banding on gray screens and other issues, and they've also had weird tinting issues when viewed at an angle. And here's what I can say. It's been massively improved on the LG C5, at least on my unit. Now this could vary massively from unit to unit, so I could be wrong about this, but it does seem like they've made some improvements here. I saw no noticeable vertical banding on mine and the green tinting on white at an angle was reduced pretty significantly versus the C4 that I reviewed last year, making this, in my opinion, a far better option than the C4 if this is true of all models. And in terms of the sound, it does come with sound. It's okay. It definitely distorts at higher volume levels. It's definitely not perfect in terms of timbre. You can mess with it to try and make it sound better to you, but it's just a bit muddy. Now we'll get the job done. It's certainly acceptable, but nothing to write home about. I had no other issues with the display. I felt like the menu and firmware, while it was slow, which is annoying, it was very good overall. And in terms of VRR flicker, it's an OLED. It does have some, but it's some of the lowest I've seen out of a display in a while. So overall, the 42 inch LG C5, 
is this truly the display you've been looking for? Well, if you clicked on this video and you're looking for a 42 inch OLED, my answer is probably yes. This is probably gonna be one of the best 42 inch OLEDs money can buy. It has excellent contrast in both dark and bright rooms. It gets much brighter than 32 inch options. It's certainly fast enough to use for gaming and has excellent motion clarity. And overall, this is just a really great display. Not to mention, you can also use it as a TV. I only wish that it would hit, you know, a thousand nits or higher to make it just that little bit brighter. And I do wish it was like, 165 or 240 hertz to make that little bit faster. But aside from those two things, this is honestly almost a perfect display. And if you're in the market for one, I can highly, highly recommend it. And honestly, I'm gonna give this thing a solid nine out of 10. It's an excellent display. And if I wasn't going for the larger, brighter, faster LG G5, I'd probably be using it as my own personal monitor.